Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It's Tuesday, January 16th. Well, we've been in the deep freeze now for a couple of days. Yeah, uh, people still not used to it, though. That's true. No. <laughs> and we knew by this morning anywhere there would be water would probably be a problem. Thank goodness it's not coming in the form of Mother Nature, but it did show up in some places you may not necessarily think about until we start getting pictures like this from overnight. I know this is a, this is a good one from our, our former co-worker Kevin Heisen. Uh, this is a, the car wash there in Bernie. And as you you know would expect, I guess this is what happens when uh, it gets super cold and there's water. Uh, another good reminder to if you have those like automatic sprinklers to go ahead and turn those off or reprogram them or whatever you need to do. Now we know pipes break or irrigation systems act up. So if you see anything unusual that's causing perhaps a road hazard or anything like that, please let us know. Send us an email news at ksat.com. Yeah, it makes for a pretty picture. It does. <laughs> But just to look at, not yeah, well, to deal those, with. Those icicles look sharp, man. Right? You got to be careful. Uh, yeah, so cold this morning, guys. At, at least an improvement, though, from yesterday morning where we were dealing with some ice. Uh, now it's just in car washes and things like that, not on the roads. And that's uh, just how we want it. Uh, very, very cold, though. We got to start with the wind chill. This is what it feels like right now. Eight here in San Antonio. Nine, Canyon Lake. Feels like one in Kerrville, negative two in Las Maples. Some very, very cold wind chills. Winds are still fairly strong and that's why we're uh, getting these kind of numbers. Winds are forecast to uh, calm a little bit this afternoon. So at least there's that and then the sun is out. So that's going to help us a little bit too. 22 here in San Antonio, an improvement from our 19 that we dropped down to earlier. Seguin's at 22, but still in the teens in Bernie and Kerrville. I think we do manage to get above freezing for at least a little while this afternoon. 30 noon time. There's your high temperature, 35 at 4 p.m. But as quickly as we get there, we're going to fall back down into the 20s. And here's the problem. Tonight, we'll have clear skies, light winds, very dry air. And this is the result. I've lowered the temperatures for tonight into tomorrow morning a little bit. 16 is now what we're forecasting here in San Antonio. 12 in Fair Oaks Ranch, down to 11 in Curvo, maybe even single digits in places like Bandera. So this is another night where we could see some pipe bursting cold weather. Take the precautions now. Beyond this, we finally start to see warmer morning lows. Uh, but we do want to caution you there. It is going to be very cold again tomorrow morning, RJ. Uh, a little calmer on the roads, thankfully, this morning. Yeah, Justin, a uh, big difference from what we saw, I mean, 24 hours ago where we've seen uh, several accidents, incidents because of people sliding all over uh, many of our busy interstates and highways. So that's good news as people headed back to work and school this morning that for the most part, things have been mostly mostly pretty calm throughout the entire city. Look, looking here at 1604 at Medio Creek, you do see traffic moving here pretty smoothly. Now, there are a couple of things just to kind of let you know about if you are, head, are headed out to some parts of town. We're looking at the uh, stalled vehicle here in the northbound lane of 35 at Olympia Parkway uh, and good news here is that I was just looking at the uh, traffic map here and we were indicating some delays there but uh, now we see a bunch of green here on our screen so that's good because it was backing up traffic up to the forum so it appears as if this may have been cleared out so our maps are still kind of indicating a little bit of a of a delay there so we have another solid vehicle being reported 1604 uh, eastbound at Babcock Road on the far northwest side, but that has been uh, that's uh, not causing any major delays at the moment. So we were talking a lot about you know what just just water being on the road. So one big message that TechStop wanted to kind of share with uh, with of course you guys our viewers and anyone out there is to make sure not to turn your sprinklers on today. Obviously you want to make sure that uh, your irrigation systems were turned off any sort of busted pipes, anything of that nature. Obviously, any water that runs onto roads, sidewalks can still have the chance of freezing over. So we definitely want to make sure that we make people uh, aware that we do not water, want any sort of water runoff on any of our uh, neighborhood streets. And of course, lastly, this can probably cost you a lot of money, especially when we talk about frozen pipes, busted pipes, and things of that nature. But uh, for the most part, guys, again, Big difference from yesterday. Traffic looking pretty good out there across the city of San Antonio. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. Well, during this cold weather snap, a nonprofit is providing a safe and warm place for people in our community to stay. Tiffany Huertas joins us live with the impact that this program is having. Good morning. 
Good morning. We're live here at Communities Under the Bridge. Now, this is a local nonprofit that is helping people experiencing homelessness have a warm place to stay and food. Now, the nonprofit has been here in San Antonio since 1996, and they have been here at this building near Hayes Street and Chestnut Street over 12 years. They offer different services, including its overnight shelter. Last night, they had over 75 men and women and even three puppies stay here. The nonprofit provides sleeping bags, gloves, hats, scarves, and a warm meal. They come in at 7, they go in, they get a mass briefing, they get fresh baked cookies and hot chocolate, and then they get to watch a movie, and then after the movie it's lights out, they go to bed. In the morning we get them up at 7, feed them a hot breakfast, and then they start to process out. All of this is possible thanks to volunteers and different organizations coming together and donating. Now, there are different ways you can get involved, including cooking meals, helping organize and distribute donations. And Diane says everyone that stays here is extremely grateful, especially during this weather. And this morning, the volunteers here are busy. They are preparing meals for tonight. As you can see, some of them are ready here but there are going to be some chicken strips and french fries on the menu. Now, if you want to learn more on how you can get involved and different ways to help at this organization, we're going to have that on our website on ksat.com. We'll send it back to you. Thank you, Tiffany. Here's a look at today's 9 at 9. The Department of Justice is expected to release its critical incident report on law enforcement's response to the Robb Elementary School shooting in Uvalde on Thursday. This comes more than 18 months after the mass shooting. The goal of the report is to provide an independent account of law enforcement's response that day and learn how to better respond to another active shooter incident. Tensions are escalating in the Middle East after Iran launched deadly missile strikes inside Iraq near the U.S. consulate. The strikes are raising concern that Iran is getting more aggressive in the region. Iraq's government is holding a security meeting today to go over Iran's noncompliance regarding a security deal between the two countries. Here in the U.S., Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is out of the hospital after prostate cancer treatment, just in time to face this new escalation. In a strong start for the Republican presidential nomination, former President Donald Trump won big in Iowa. His projected victory coming just 30 minutes after caucuses began. Ron DeSantis clinched second place, just barely edging out Nikki Haley, who was third. Meanwhile, entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy announced he is dropping out of the race and backing Trump. The brutal blast of winter weather is expanding. Snow from Washington, D.C. to New York and Boston and across the Midwest, as far south as Texas, brutal and life-threatening cold. If you're flying anywhere today, make sure to check your flight status before you leave in case there are any disruptions. It looks like Apple has done enough of a redesign on two of its high-end Apple watches to get around a patent fight. Sales of the Series 9 and Ultra 2 versions were briefly stopped amid a patent dispute over the technology they use to measure blood oxygen levels. Two grocery store giants are still working on a merger, but it's being pushed back. Last year, Kroger proposed buying Albertsons with the intention to finish the deal early this year, but ongoing talks with federal and state regulators are now delaying that. Furniture giant IKEA is pushing ahead with plans to cut prices this year, despite shipping disruptions through the Red Sea. The company that owns most of the IKEA stores worldwide says it is willing to operate this year on, quote, thinner profits. The matchup is set. The Texans will visit the Baltimore Ravens on Saturday in the AFC Divisional Playoffs. It'll be a rematch as the Texans opened their season in Baltimore but fell short in that first game. The Texans have come a long way since then, clinching the AF South Division and winning 11 of their past 14 games. Saturday's game is set for 3.30 p.m. The FX series The Bear tied for the most wins at last night's Emmys. It won six in all, including Outstanding Comedy Series. Succession also won six trophies among the Outstanding Drama Series. And with a win for his special Elton John Live Farewell from Dodger Stadium, Elton joined the Elite EGOT Club for those who have won all four of the major entertainment awards, an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony. And that's today's Night at Night. 
Beginning today, the capital murder trial of Hilson Avilar Rodriguez will get underway. We will be live streaming this trial as soon as it begins on KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, and KSAT's YouTube channel. Avila Rodriguez is accused of a double murder back in 2018. If he is found guilty, he would automatically be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Our Erica Hernandez will have a live update at noon on this case. And again, you can watch it live as soon as it begins. Time right now, 908, 22 degrees. Freezing temperatures are hard on all of us, but especially those without a place to live. So when we come back, the organization is lending a helping hand and the resources available to everyone. As we've been talking about, old man winter has a serious grip on San Antonio with temperatures in the teens, and that means there are folks out there on the street who are suffering but don't need to be. Many of those on the street ended up dealing with those potentially deadly temperatures. I was frozen on the sidewalk, and they stole my shoes. He got me shoes, and I was frozen. I, mean, I could have died. And that is how serious this cold spell is. A hot meal and a warm shelter may save some lives. It's just a matter of convincing some folks they need to come in out of the cold. And our David Sears joins us now here in the studio. Yeah, that gentleman, just one illustration of how dangerous these temperatures are, how they how they been dangerous and how they're going to continue to be dangerous for the next few days. For some, we are in desperate times. Those create desperate measures, but out of those measures come some of our unsung heroes. We're talking about folks in our city who are willing to brave those sub freezing temperatures to take care of some of our most vulnerable, the unhoused. As we have come to learn, many of those experiencing homelessness for whatever reason don't want help. However, folks from Corazon Ministries and many other nonprofits around town and the cold temperatures are convincing folks they can get in out of the weather, get a hot meal and even shelter overnight. Brittany Ackerson spent her evening in 20 degrees with a wind chill down in the teens, making sure others were taken care of. Are you sunshine? I'm so proud of you. You still have the foil blanket. We have lives out there, you know, that are struggling mental health, substance use, no support, no love, don't trust anybody. You want to go overnight? You want to go to Travis Park? Wherever, yeah. Wherever okay, go hold on just a minute. You can see that dedication and care she takes. Ackerson also worked with other nonprofits to find shelter for those who want to head inside. Back to Aiden Perez, the man who was frozen on the sidewalk, but he was able to recover. You still have your hospital band on? Yes. Of your hypothermia? Yeah. Okay. I was frozen. Unbelievable. That is what some of the members of our community are dealing with, though. Thanks to volunteer folks, volunteers at the Day Center at Grace Lutheran was able to get a hot meal. They are up to 230 meals a day, and with the winter weather not letting up anytime soon, this shelter and many others around town are going to be ready. Luckily, we work really closely with the other homeless response partners in the city. We've been talking about this for a couple of weeks. So if you are experiencing homelessness or if you know someone that is out on the street that needs some help or maybe they don't have heat in their own home or need some warm places to stay, scan that QR code right there. That'll take you to a list of shelters all around San Antonio when they are open and where they're located and they are ready and willing to help also. You can see on your screen the Homeless Connections Hotline. That number is 210-207-1799. A lot of places around town willing to open their doors and help you out. So if you know somebody, then make sure you get them to one of these places. Corazon Ministries website is also looking for volunteers if you have some time over the next few days. I know Justin said it was going to be like 35 today, but tomorrow morning, the coldest morning so far at 16 degrees. Yes. So if you know somebody or you just want to volunteer, now is the time to, to show what kind of community we have. And we know there's a lot of folks out there giving over their time and taking taking that chance of being out in that cold. Absolutely. We, for those of us who've lived here a long time, we often call San Antonio a big little town yep and we try real hard to take care of our our folks yeah with right. a big heart david thank you thanks let's go outside with live cam and uh some of us woke up this morning with uh, a concierge level of service as far as <laughs> making sure the vehicle was warm and ready for work steph oh, yes wow. i a uh, very lucky girl here my husband went out to make sure not only to warm up the car but just to make sure everything was okay so that when i got in the car i would have a safe ride to work. So that sounds thank like you, Luis. Luis. That's yeah. a good guy. And that's a call for the yeah. rest of us raising our game. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> thank you. Now that you put that out there. Uh, yeah, and you're going to have to, you may get that sort of service again tomorrow morning because <laughs> temperatures are going to be brutally cold again. I want to show you some of the extremes. I think this is interesting. So the coldest wind chill we saw this morning 
was five. That's what it felt like. Uh, that was the coldest they saw, at least here in San Antonio. We obviously had some colder numbers in the Hill Country. But now let's compare that to our heat index that we saw last summer. On June 20th, we had the highest heat index we've ever seen here in San Antonio at 116. Look at the difference. Uh, over a 210 day span, obviously, but a 111 degree difference. We've had some pretty intense extremes here in San Antonio. And again, tomorrow morning, could be a little bit colder than what we were looking at this morning. The only good news there is we'll take the wind out of the equation, so there won't be that wind chill. As uh, we go outside for you, blue skies looks nice, but man, it's cold. 22 right now, New Braunfels 23. We've still got wind chills in the single digits, and that's with sun. Pretty impressive. Bernie feels like two right now. Kerrville feels like four. Uh, and you look around the area, Lost Maples was carrying a negative wind chill for much of the morning. Now at one, so a little bit of improvement there. Feels like 10 right now in Hondo and 13 in Castroville. You get the idea, but the winds will start to subside today. So we'll get some gusts around 30 or so this morning. And then by the afternoon, you'll see these winds really start to come down. Now, the flip side to that, once you lose the wind, wind actually helps to stir up the atmosphere a little bit. And in theory, keeps you just a little bit warmer. I know it didn't feel that way last night, but. That's the idea. And so tonight with the winds kind of going away, clear skies and very dry air, that allows us to fall temperature wise a little bit more probably than this morning. 30 noon time will be up around 35 by four o'clock and five o'clock, but uh, down into the low 30s by 7 p.m. and eventually 20s by nine o'clock. So we're right back below freezing after sunset. And here's what I'm thinking tomorrow morning, 16 here in San Antonio. So yes, a little bit colder than this morning. And I would not be surprised in some of the low lying areas in the hill country to see temperatures fall into the single digits tomorrow morning. So this is more pipe bursting weather. We got to take the precautions that we've been doing. You'll want to do it again for tomorrow morning and make sure you bring the pets inside. That is uh, some super cold weather right there. All right, let's look ahead. So uh, we have uh, that system and the cold air starting to move east a little bit. And then by Wednesday afternoon, we start to see some moisture trying to come back here, maybe in the form of some clouds. We may get a little bit of fog Thursday morning. And Thursday is actually going to be a fairly warm day. Uh, we may see temperatures get back in the 60s and even 70s. Then a cold front comes through Thursday night, and we're right back in the cold air again. Windy on Friday and cold. That'll be the case going into the weekend. Now, this stretch of cold air, though, only lasts a couple days because by late Saturday into Sunday, we're going to start to get some moisture and cloud cover in here. And I think uh, by the time we get into late Sunday into Monday, we'll have some pretty good rain chances. So that's uh, an improvement, I think. But just be prepared for a roller coaster ride this week. So uh, tomorrow, 45, we're up to 68 Thursday. We fall back down to 49 Friday, cold on Saturday. Then we start to climb Sunday, Monday into Tuesday as we get a little bit more of that moisture. So uh, a lot to look at and rain chance wise, any rain chance holds off until Sunday and Monday. But I did raise rain chances on Monday and I'm feeling encouraged that uh, maybe we'll have a little better shot. Uh, a lot to look at though here in the seven day forecast the morning fog Thursday. We jump up to 68 as we said back down to 49 on Friday. Another really cold morning Saturday and there you see the rain chances Sunday into Monday with some warmer temperatures yet again. <coughs> Thank you, Justin. We are in the midst of Dream Week, which is a series of events put on to help foster the dreams Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stood for, for inclusivity. Dream Week continues throughout the 28th, and digital journalist Mason Hickcock takes a closer look at why this event is so important. It's all about creating an environment where every single person is considered a genius. Shokare Nakpodia was inspired to create Dream Week more than a decade ago after attending San Antonio's annual MLK March. And we decided to maybe think about a way to extend that feeling of community that the march represents. Nakpodia says San Antonio has responded so well to Dream Week that every year new events are created. We, co we call it the largest community curated ev event of its kind in the nation, possibly the world. Dream Week events are not just for adults, but also aim to inspire the next generation to find their voice. We want to make sure that we do not dismiss the possibility of having a new MLK in a 12-year-old child on the south side. We want to make sure that everyone has 
an opportunity to share their voices. If you want to experience something that you would never experience anywhere else, you need to come to DreamWeek. If you want to find yourself, find your voice, be part of the community. I mean, really feel alive within a community. Even if it's only for this brief duration you're here to visit, come to DreamWeek. For more information on the hundreds of events happening this year, go to ksat.com. Mason Hickok, KSAT 12 News. Thanks so much, Mason. 921, still 22 degrees. And the need for blood donations is still very great. When we come back, what the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is doing to bring in more donors. I know we've been talking a lot about the freezing weather we've been dealing with right now, but hopefully later this week, more people can get out and donate blood. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says their blood supply is critically low, and producer Haley Powers tells us about a new initiative that they have in hopes of bringing in more donors. The need for blood is dire. That's why the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is hoping you will step up. They say they are at a two-day supply and would like to be at a three- to five-day supply of blood. To help get more donors in, the center is starting a new campaign called Commit for Compassion. Their goal? For everyone in our community to donate four times a year. If we had everybody donate at least two times a year, we, it would make a significant impact to the blood supply. So by donating four times a year, we would literally end the blood shortage. The center says you can donate every eight weeks, but they say fear is one of the main reasons people don't. Most people don't donate because they're afraid. And we really try to make the process as easy as possible. When you get to your appointment, a health screening will take place before you donate. That takes about 10 minutes. It also takes about 10 minutes to do the actual blood donation process. Altogether, the entire donating process will take about 30 minutes. Haley Powers, KSAT 12 News. And this is timely because January is National Blood Donor Month and University Health is also accepting blood donations. You can schedule an appointment online at donatebloodtoday.com. You can also find more information in the KSAT community section of ksat.com. 926 and the temperature is now up to a searing 23 degrees out there. <laughs> We're ahead on GMSA at 9. Still cold though. Trump supporters overwhelmingly showed up last night on the coldest caucus day ever. Seeing as Ivan Rodriguez is in Iowa and will join us after the break to talk more about the caucus and what's coming up next. Welcome back. Just about 9.30, former President Donald Trump won the Iowa caucuses yesterday by a historic margin while the race for runner-up was neck and neck. CNN's Ivan Rodriguez joins us live from Duane, Iowa, with a look at the results and the reaction from last night and what comes next in the race for the White House. Good morning, Ivan. Mark, Stephanie, good morning. Former President Trump's win in Iowa shows how devoted Republicans remain to him and also his campaign. Trump won in nearly every voting block in the Iowa caucuses, and his message to his opponents couldn't have been clear. It's time to get out or get on board. Even the coldest caucus in memory couldn't freeze the enthusiasm Iowa Republicans have for former President Donald Trump. I just want to thank you all. This is a very special night. And the big night is going to be in November when we take back our country. The 45th president claiming a landslide victory in the Hawkeye state, setting his sights on the general election. He encourages opponents to get out of the race and on board with him. It's uh, just so important, and I want to make that a very big part of our message. We're going to come together. It's going to happen soon, too. The former president topping 50 percent of the vote in Iowa, cementing his position as front runner. But the margin between second and third place was tight. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis outpacing former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley by a slim lead, both claiming momentum and both vowing they're the only candidates to take on Trump and President Joe Biden. We have a lot of work to do, but I can tell you this, as the next president of the United States, I am going to get the job done for this country. I can safely say, tonight, Iowa made this Republican primary a two-person race. As the primary season kicks off, the stakes couldn't be higher, even if the temperatures were at an all-time low. And DeSantis edged out Haley by a couple thousand votes, but now the focus is shifting toward New Hampshire, where polling shows Haley is in a stronger position heading in to that primary next week. DeSantis has also made the decision to travel today to South Carolina first and then New Hampshire. Mark, Stephanie? 
Yeah, Ivan, all right, so you already talked about some polling in New Hampshire. What does the future look like for the GOP candidates? So right now in New Hampshire, former President Trump is still uh, in the lead, about 39% of likely voters on that primary day, but it's a closer gap now. Nikki Haley is close to 32%, uh, so it's a lot closer than it was in the last couple of months, without a doubt, and Ron DeSantis coming in in that poll at 5%. It's also worth noting, though, that in that poll, Chris Christie uh, was still in the race, Ramaswamy was still in the race, so good news for the Haley camp probably getting a lot of those Chris Christie votes. The Ramaswamy votes might be heading in Trump's direction. Also heard this morning, Ivan, that Nikki Haley said she doesn't want to debate anybody else uh, for the rest of the cycle unless it's President Trump or President Biden. So we shall see how things shake out. Ivan Rodriguez, live from Des Moines. Thank you. And let's look out there with live cam. It's 23 degrees, it's still very cold, uh, although I guess we're looking forward to another cold morning tomorrow you said 16 degrees and I was like how rude <laughs> uh, yeah I it just it's uh, it's it's not right it really isn't and uh, yeah we're gonna have another cold morning coming up tomorrow morning and then we'll finally start to warm up some uh, we got so many pictures in coming in uh, on KSAC connect and of, of all the ice around town because uh, in, in a situation like this the uh, sprinklers were left on and now you get this icy wonderland uh, beautiful picture, but uh, hopefully we didn't have any damage there with spring course or anything like that. Uh, thank you very much for sending that in, and we'll try to show a few more throughout the morning. Let's look across the country. It is negative six in Bismarck and International Falls. Look, that's actually an improvement from where they've been last several days. This cold air is on the move finally and kind of letting up a little bit. Uh, you'll notice Miami sitting at 80 degrees. They're still loving it on South Beach, still soaking in the sun down there. No big deal. Uh, but the rest of the country, pretty much for the most part, in the icebox. Uh, you look across Texas, you got single digits, Amarillo, Lubbock. It's 11 of Wichita Falls, 22 here in town. And we've got a wind chill right now of eight. Single digit wind chills across the board. New Braunfels, Seguin, Bernie, and Kerrville. And we've got a northerly wind, too, gusting from time to time. That wind will die down today, 30 noon time. We'll make it up to around 35 for high. Uh, and then once that sun goes down, temperatures plummet and they plummet fast. Uh, we'll get another very, very cold morning, as Steph pointed out, coming up tomorrow. We'll talk more about that and uh, what you can expect for the rest of the week, including some rain chances, too, coming up in just a couple minutes. And our San Antonio Spurs battled back in Atlanta after a cold start. Cold start, I get it. And it <laughs> wasn't enough to get a road win. David and RJ are back to break down this yeah. latest Spurs loss. All right, David. <clears throat> Not much to break down because if you've seen the previous 31 losses, doesn't pretty much look like it. Although... Yeah. Although Wimby did not have a very good first half. No, he had a great and, second half. And I guess, you know what, if you're looking at some, uh, some takeaways from this, obviously, you know, the Spurs uh, down by 35. As much as 35, they were down Boom, 35. in the second quarter. Well, coming out second half, uh, Victor Wimbanyama was not on the court, David. No. So you got to wonder time. what was going on there. But then he got on the court mm -hmm. and 26 points and nine slam dunks. There's a mm -hmm. few of them there. Here, here was the, the positive, another positive for you. You know, the Spurs have always struggled in the third quarter all season. They struggled last year in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, they outscored Atlanta 33-18 in the third quarter and then they outscored him in the fourth quarter 32 22 but it was too little too late yeah and i think all of uh, what we've been saying all along this is all about development obviously there's a lot of chatter about greg popovich uh, benching victor to start the second half but the way he responded, I mean, again, zero points, first half, 26 points in the second half, all in a span of about 16 minutes or so, really kind of rallied the team back. They were down by as little as six, but just could not get the job done. And even uh, Victor Wanyama said afterwards, he's like, you know what, I'm going to take this in stride. And, you know, basically I had no other choice but to step up my game. And it wasn't just Victor. He also, Pop also benched Vassell and Trey Jones to start the second half. So, he was but not I happy, thought but they this, responded. Wait, 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 wait! You said this was about development. I thought last year was development. This year was time to well, win. Well, for Wemby, at this point, it's oh, okay. development for okay. Wemby. Well, okay. and, and whatever it is that pop, whatever buttons he has to push, I mean, I then it's just gonna have to be the case. Where's the win button? Where's that button at? <laughs> well, you push that button? hopefully this leads to wins. <laughs> uh, well, and that's what we thought. You know, 
after they beat Phoenix twice in a row hey, yeah, in Phoenix. We thought, wow, ah, this is going to be a great season, and it's so yeah. far. But, yeah, I mean, Wendy's, Wendy's developing, but they're finally figuring out where to get him the ball. But when you're down 35, yeah, that's the only that reason point. they came back because yeah. that's the NBA. You get a big lead. You know the team's going to make a run, and all you got to do is hold them off at the end, and they held them off and ended up Oof. winning by, what, 10? Uh, RJ, uh, I want to bring up something you mentioned in, in passing earlier this morning. Yeah. You went to the game the other night. Right. And you said, even to a casual observer, if you know a little bit about basketball, you were seeing what appeared to be mental mistakes mm. on behalf of the team capitalizing mm. Mm. on Wimby's strengths on the court. Elaborate if you can. Yeah, basically, I mean, I, I think that many times the guys kind of overthink things. Just kind of get the ball to Victor, kind of get him into his spots, kind of get things going a little bit. Uh, I think it was also Justin that mentioned, because Justin was there as well, where, you know, a lot of the passes into Wimby were maybe uh, a little bit below where he couldn't really kind of pick up the ball at time. And so it's just these little mental things that are kind of uh, that are bothering the Spurs and again they won that game Friday yeah. against a beat up kind of Charlotte team but still I mean it was a it was a good indication that we've seen them give him the ball in more spots get him a little bit more comfortable and to be fair they start winning we stop nitpicking right Yes. More or less, David? <laughs> David didn't say anything. Winning cures a lot. <laughs> David didn't say anything. We'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge. When okay. We <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, but, you know, I mean, they, and that's one thing that we have talked about, like, pretty much all season. They don't take care of the ball. They don't, they don't regard every possession as sacred. It's like, ah, we'll just throw it away. And, but, you know, that's, yeah. part of, that's part of the Wimby problem, though, is they can't get Wimby the ball where he needs it. Yeah. They Bad passes. And it's like, ah, we'll get him next time. Well, the next time you're down... 35. Well, hopefully the next time, even so though they will. are on the road, they're playing yep. against obviously one of the best teams in the NBA yeah, right now, a good. team that's uh, probably you know in line to win an NBA championship this year. But that being said, again, we'll see if the message uh, it, you know continues from what we saw there, the Atlanta game, and the guys kind of come out, start off a little bit faster. Not a back-to-back, -back, so Wimby should be playing yeah. in this one, although this is the second of five in a row on the road. Yeah, so. all right, David. Uh, Here we go. Quick, want to mention this. Texas I am all over this bandwagon. I got a seat on the bandwagon. Oh, I awesome. found one, I jumped on it, and we're rolling, baby. Ooh, we're yeah. rolling right to Baltimore this Saturday, and this could be a tough one. So hopefully, you know, the seat will last along. But uh, it's supposed to be like 30-something degrees, but sunny yeah. at kickoff. Yeah. They played Baltimore the very first game of the season. C.J. Stroud's very first game. Mm -hmm. He threw for 242 yards, zero picks. They were down 7-6 at half, and I think Baltimore came back and scored like 15 in the third yeah, I, I and think won it. But biggest thing, David, you know. was that they competed. I mean, they yeah. you could see right away that D'Amico Ryan's kind of already was starting to build that culture there, and it's taken us to this point. Dave, I said earlier on Good Morning San Antonio, I would have never thought that yeah. out of the two Texas teams that Houston would have been the one playing this weekend. <laughs> would have never believed that, but here we are. Congrats to the Texans, and they're playing with house money right now. Here's the that positive. Way. How many times have you seen the team that gets the by not play very well there you go. in it's their first game rusty. and the team that's actually coming off a really good win yeah. roll right through them. So there, there's a positive for the Texan yeah. fans, that's for us right. on that bandwagon. No, that's a great point, David, because Baltimore actually sat Lamar Jackson and many mm -hmm. of their starters the last week of the regular season, and then they didn't play last week, whereas Houston has yep. basically been fighting for their playoff lives for about a couple of weeks now. Going to be a good one. Yeah. Going to be a good one. On case at 12. Yeah, but Go RJ, Texas. you're not alone <laughs> uh, about knowing right? who would have thought it would be the Texans. Uh, uh. Yeah. I can't wait to see David's new <laughs> Texans beanie. We'll buy one. I get one. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Right. 940, 23 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And we still have maybe a day and a half left of dealing with these cold temperatures. And while we don't have to worry too much about icy roads, it's still important to make sure your car is taken care of so you don't get stranded in the cold. After the break, what to do to make sure your car runs well for you. Well, for some yesterday, it was a bit of nightmare driving on the roads because of those icy conditions. But fortunately, today has been a whole lot better. However, it's still important to know what adjustments you need to make when driving out in the extreme cold, especially because we still have one more hard freeze tomorrow morning. Patty Santos explains how you can avoid being left stranded in the cold. In less than five minutes, Jane Neal at this auto parts store at Goliad and Pecan Valley Drive gave our battery a free test. Good. Looks good. He says the cool weather can push batteries and vehicle engines to the brink. You definitely want to make sure your transmission and oil is on level. Because the harder your truck has to run in this type of cold weather, 
you're quick to break down. Luckily, the case at weather team says icy roads shouldn't be much of a problem, but the cold will linger. Sergeant Orlando De Luna with the Texas Department of Public Safety urges drivers to carry a blanket, water, and food in their trunks in case of a breakdown. Because the worst thing we want is a vehicle that doesn't start in the morning. To ensure safe travel, De Luna says start by checking the tread and air pressure. You want to make sure that you also have in your vehicle a jack, uh, the proper tool to remove that lug nut. Then take a look under the hood. Make sure the fluid levels and coolant are topped off. You want to inspect your windshield wipers because we're defrosting the windshield in the morning and we want to make sure they're properly working. AAA says dead batteries are one of the top service calls in Texas during cold weather. The average battery life is three years. Some batteries have a sticker with a purchase year. But if you don't see one, call the store where you bought it. And all they have to do is just pull up your phone number, your name, and uh, pull up when you purchase the battery and be able to give the information easily over the phone. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. It's been a cold morning, but it's almost encouraging to see 23 mm -hmm. degrees after being in the teens, right? And just having the sun out makes a difference. Like, it just it just feels better. Uh, but that is great information that Patty just passed along. Yes. And uh, you'll want to remember that again tomorrow morning mm -hmm. because, yeah, it's, it's going to get cold yet again. I want to show you another picture. You guys have done wow. a great job sending pictures of the ice. Let's go to Windcrest. Uh, the funny part about this picture is they captioned it with the perfect background for a frozen Disney play. Yeah, yeah I'd say so. Uh, that works. Olaf somewhere out there. Uh, yeah, uh, but a lot of ice uh, this morning. If the sprinklers, there's some water out there, and uh, it, it does make for a pretty picture. Uh, we appreciate it. And as we look at the lows this morning, down to 19 here in San Antonio, 20 at Randolph, 20 in Seguin. There were teens for much of the hill country. Uh, and everyone in our viewing area saw a hard freeze all the way down to Beeville, Catula, Carrizo Springs. You're down to 21 this morning. Look at Rock Springs, 12. That was the low. Uh, and I think it'll be a little bit colder tomorrow morning. Look at this. This is the forecast for Wednesday morning. 16 here in San Antonio, 12 Fair Oaks Ranch, 11 in Kerrville. And here's why I think it's going to be a little bit colder. We had the winds last night, which made for brutal wind chills. In this case, the winds die down. We get clear skies, dry air actually allows the air temperature to fall a little bit more. So this is pipe bursting weather. This is uh, the kind of temperature you've got to take care of things outside. Uh, be ultra careful with uh, those kind of numbers. Uh, thankfully, we will warm up tomorrow afternoon and eventually get back uh, into the 40s. And we have a little bit of a warm up on the way. Not so much today. I mean, we will get into the 30s, but uh, still a chilly day, 30 noontime. 35 is our forecast high, sunny skies all day long, and those winds finally start to calm into the afternoon. We're still getting a few gusts up around 2025, but they'll come down and uh, we'll see light winds tonight. But once the sun goes down, we're already at or below freezing at 6 o'clock. Uh, it will be cold. Right now, we've got clear skies and temperatures uh, sitting in the low 20s, 22 degrees at the airport. But I think the more important number here is over here. Your wind chill still single digits. The winds are still pretty strong. You got winds 10 to 20 gusting higher than that. And this is the end result. And by the way, wind chill is kind of an interesting number. I wrote an article about the history of wind chill, how we came up with it and the formula we used to get it. If you want to check it out, it's on our uh, on our web page, on the weather web page and our whatever the weather blog. Uh, if you wanted to know the history. Wind gust forecast today. Yeah, the winds do come down. So by 6 o'clock, we're looking at 5 to 10 miles per hour, then they really go calm overnight. Here's the big picture across the country, and there is uh, quite a bit of weather across the northeast. Snow this morning, New York, uh, down to Washington. Nothing that's very heavy, and you've got some rain down across parts of Florida, which is still pretty warm, but some cooler air will eventually make it down there, too. The rest of the country kind of sitting in the wake of this big storm, and all that cold air is finally kind of starting to subside a little bit. But here's something interesting. I always think this is so cool. So when the cold air comes down over the Gulf of Mexico, you always get this interesting cloud formation. It looks like, you know, lines here. And that is a result of that cold air moving over the warmer waters of the Gulf of Mexico. And you almost always get this signature with those big cold fronts. Uh, and it lines up right there along the coast. Cool stuff on the visible satellite. Our future cast shows that we will start to get maybe a few more clouds starting late Wednesday into early Thursday. In fact, we could even see a little bit of patchy fog Thursday morning. Thursday is going to be a warm day, but we get another front pushing through, and this cools us right back down on Friday. So it's really a roller coaster 
type week when it comes to temperatures. And then as far as rain is concerned, well, that holds off until Sunday into Monday, but looks like we've got some pretty good rain chances. This uh, is looking promising. I know that doesn't show a whole lot there Sunday, but I think as we get into Monday, our rain chances really do come up. So here's what we're thinking. 45 tomorrow after 16 in the morning, 68 Thursday, a warmer day, uh, but then we fall right back down into the 40s Friday. It's windy, another hard freeze Saturday morning, and then some rain chances Sunday. And right now, Monday's the day. We've got a 40% chance of rain in the forecast on Monday, and I think that may even continue into Tuesday. Uh, in this case, all liquid. Uh, warmer, but uh, good to see rain back in the forecast. Yes, and under those conditions, not the ones we have now. Correct. Agreed. <laughs> Thank you, Chester. Yeah. 950, 24 degrees, slowly making progress, yes. a degree, degree at a time. I will take that, and we will take the sun, and the hippos are cold, I guess. Oh, I see on the There's bottom one out there left. Right now. Can you imagine mm -hmm. how cold that water is? Oh, poor hippos. <laughs> Oh, he was playing around. Yeah, they're fine. Oh, they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you they later. They got fixed kids. Yeah. If you've used Apple's family sharing perk, you could get a bite of a $25 million settlement. The lawsuit alleges Apple misled users about the non-Apple apps they could share. Apple denies it, but if you had a family sharing program between June 21st, 2015 and January 30th, 2019, you may be eligible to file a claim for up to $30. The deadline is March 1st. Hello Verizon customers, you could pocket up to $100 because of a $100 hundred million dollar settlement. That lawsuit alleges Verizon deceptively charged administrative fees. Verizon denies it, but if you had a postpaid plan between January 1st, 2016 and November 8th, 2023 and paid the fees, you have until April 15th to file a claim. You can check the settlement website to see if you qualify. And here's a win for Fortnite gamers. Epic Games has agreed to pay $245 million after the FTC suit accusing the company of tricking people, including kids who are really into this game, into making unwanted purchases in the game. The deadline to apply for a refund is February 29th. So how do you file a claim? It's easy online and we have links on our website. Now remember Apple's battery gate? People who filed claims in that lawsuit are now receiving their $92. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. We started at 22 and... Here we go. Yeah, 24, I'll take it with the sun. Making strides, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the sun's out, it, that, that does help, uh, but the wind chill values are still in the single digits. So uh, just yeah. you know, still keep your jacket around today and you'll definitely want it tomorrow morning. We're yes. gonna add about 10 degrees for a high temperature today? Yeah, somewhere around 35 or so. So we'll briefly get above freezing, but teens tomorrow okay. morning. All right, we'll be prepared for that. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.